If you're not familiar with the Iron Master, this is an evolution of the counterbalanced forklift where there is a pivot in uh, behind, just behind the mast and the entire mast pivots so that you can work in extremely narrow aisles, basically uh, aisles around about 1.9 to 2.1 metres in, in width. So that allows a substantial increase in the storage density in your warehouse. They are a bit of a unique design. We're looking at the Isle Master here. I caught up with Philip Graham from Isle Master and we had, a, uh, we had an interesting discussion, which is the topic of this video. And the, the Isle Master fork is, is really a bit different. I'd never driven one before. I'd known people that had used them and they raved about them. So I thought it was time that I had a little look and, and made myself familiar with the Isle Master and what it can do. You'll see here in this little excerpt from the corporate video that it does work in extremely narrow aisles. In Europe, apparently it gets down to a 1.6 metre aisle, uh, but in Australia they're recommending 1.9 to 2.1 metres depending upon the, uh, the forklift, the particular model that you get. Uh, this is Philip on the Isle Master um, out at their site in Sydney. Uh, we were just having a bit of a look around and I was able to get on the forklift and have a little look and drive. And it's a, it's, it really is a lovely machine. It looks like a tractor. It looks really ungainly, but it's actually really nice to drive. It's super smooth because it's got uh, tires with some give in it, like a, um, like a counterbalance forklift, uh, unlike the uh, typical uh, reach trucks that you would, you would be driving around, which really need to be on super smooth, um, super smooth floors for them to be you know, they don't like going outside reach trucks because the wheels are small and the tyres are really solid uh, and don't have much give in them. The Isle Master is, uh, it basically just does double duty as a yard forklift for doing truck unloading and can then come in and work in these extremely narrow aisles in the warehouse. I'll do another video on the, uh, the impact of these aisles on warehouse design so look for that one. Th there are other companies that make this type of forklift. Um, Bendy is one that I've come across recently. So there are options because these are not, as you might expect, these are not cheap. But when you consider what they actually do, I think they're actually not bad value in that you could do double duty with, with one of these. All right, so here I am on the Isle Master holding a camera, steering with one hand. So forgive the quality of the uh, the angle sometimes being a bit a bit odd. So just this is just showing side to side. Now notice that you really didn't see the forks very well when they're directly out in front of you. So what that means is that when you're picking up a pallet, you will be working off to the side so that you can see the tines. But visibility once you turn the mast to the side of uh, to the side of the forks and where they're going is actually very good. Um, and later on in the video you'll see that there you can get them equipped with cameras as you can with any forklift so if you're working at height then um, it's pretty easy to see where the, t the tines are going. The lift was super smooth everything about this forklift was really uh, was really smooth it, you know some forklifts feel very clunky and crashy but this one worked you know it really worked very nicely. Those tines are sticking out beyond the end of the pallet because that's just a that's a small skid it's not a full uh, normal Australian pallet. One of the other things that is that really su surprises you is how manoeuvrable the forklift is. So that mast when you're turning will actually turn past 90 degrees so it's like you're turning back on yourself to a certain extent. Uh, the other thing that's very different is that this is like a car because it steers with the front wheels and um, so unlike a counterbalance forklift where you've got rear wheel steering which feels a little bit odd until you get used to it, this one is, again, it's like a car, it's completely the, uh, the opposite. Here I am spinning past 90 degrees on the, uh, on the forklift. And uh, so what that means is that when you do want to travel backwards on the forklift, which is probably what you will be doing if you are travelling any distance just from the point of view of, of visibility, just as you do on a counterbalance forklift, you don't want to be driving forward all that much because the mast is in the way. Even though you do have visibility through the mast, it's always compromised because you've got, um, obviously you've got the uh, uh, the framework of the mast in front of you. So um, that's, we're gonna dive into now a little uh, section on uh, 
uh, film with my 360 camera, so we, we're right close up. So the quality's not quite the same, but uh, nevertheless, Philip has some really interesting so, things to say about the full clip, so is, let's dive into that now. This, this, when, when we go to bring out new machines into production, we, we, we start introducing certain componentry on certain models. Mm -hmm. So what you will see in the difference in the new Phase 3 Isle Master is the overhead this one hasn't upgraded yet, but there's a new overhead cabin, so it's better vision through the cab. Okay, so you can see up high, yeah. They're going to redevelop the front nose slightly, yeah. so you can see exactly from the tips of your tines from the seat. Yeah. Right. yeah. That, that's one of the flaws of this machine here. Yes, I, I did notice that. Um, when you're going out to the side, it's all right, Yeah. but straight ahead. The, the other thing that they're changing, and this is, this is massive, right? This is a bit of industry inside here. What, what they use in here at the minute is they have, a, they have a steering motor that's connected to a gear ring, and that does the steering, it's operated by the steering wheel. They're changing the design to make this more slender and, and thin, mm -hmm. and they're changing the drive system on the front. Yeah. Because currently at the moment, if you look at this, there's an axle at the front with a, with a differential, yep. Oh, yep. and yep. the motor sits behind that. Yep. So that takes up X amount of room. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're looking at a combined unit. Do you drive? Well, it, it, the thing is, this is still a direct drive system, mm -hmm. but it's got the it's got the motor at the back and the axle at front. So that, what that means is the distance from here to here. Right, it's that, going to be that's less. as small as it can be on this machine. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they'll be able to make that less. Yeah, and hey, presto, you're working a smaller aisle by a hundred mil. So it'll shrink the distance down, so they can bring this, so that whole this, front piece can no, be shorter. No, this, this will stay the same because still, the mass needs to rotate around. Oh, I see, but effectively this all, that but whole the, carriage is 100 mil shorter. The, the, the operate nail will be shorter because right. the distance from here to the front of the fork is shorter. It's shorter. Yeah. See, yeah. what defines the aisle width for an articulated forklift is the distance from the back here to the front of the time. And if you're wondering why that is, when you jump on that, swing the mast right round at 90 degrees, or, you know, yeah, past just past 90, 90, yeah. And you'll notice, if you think if you're in an aisle scenario, that's what dictates where your yeah, aisle is. Yeah, so you'll, you'll lose space out of that, that distance yeah. from that pivot point yeah. to, to the front of the, the so carriage. In, that, that's in the process of being in, it's in prototype. So in other words, in a year's time, all aisle masters will be in the Mark III. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's actually exciting times, you know. Yeah. There you go. Right. Oh, I just noticed the uh, camera. Yeah. It, so you, you notice this machine's fitted up quite high spec. There's a camera on it. So up, where is that camera? That's... The camera's up on the mast. You see in the middle part? Oh, yep, yep, up yeah. there. So, the so right that allows you to see your tines then. So when you lift the both free lift, which are these middle cylinders, then the camera, the Cam forks will be level with the camera. Oh, I see, right. So you don't right. need your camera down low. Right. You only need it for the higher for the levels. For the high, yeah. But you'll also notice on this one, as a visual aid for the, for the operator, see the stickers along the side of it? Yep. yep. Okay. So if you, you lift up, there's an arrow that will follow that. Okay. So if you lift it, say, to six and a half metres, the arrow will line up at six and a half. Got it. Yeah, yeah. so when you're going up really high, you, can, you have a you rough can, idea where you are. You can get yeah. fairly close to the to yeah. the levels. And plus, this one's fitted with a load cell as well, to tell you if you're overloaded. Yep. Okay, it doesn't give you a weight. Hey, that, there, that's the next option, but that that's the entry part of it. Right, just it's like... Just basically... You're, you're either you're okay, you're overloaded. So that'll give you the also at different heights because the height goes down yeah. once you get above sort of six and a half right. meters or something. So the the other the next model from that is giving you the actual weight. The actual weight, yeah. yeah, which is pretty useful if you're doing a lot of shipping, pallet shipping. Yeah, we we, we do actually fit them quite a bit on the masters. This particular one's built for yeah. a customer actually. So very nice. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed these couple of insights into the uh, the Iron Master, and it's definitely I think this type of forklift is worth considering if you really need to maximise the value that the storage density and the value that you're getting from your real estate.